Uh, the doc is non null by default in Java projects, especially in Java projects, and because other languages they have like might have different problems with that and stuff like that. So the brief agenda uh, is like the brief state of affairs, like what do we have with nulls currently? Um, like how do we what kind of contract we have with using nulls and not using nulls in the current project, like what do we have now actually? Uh, study code analysis, uh, how can we set the non null by default and what kind of benefits we can get out of this. I will try to show you by examples on our real code that we have right now. How can it benefit all of us. So, uh, the first thing is pretty easy and kind of interesting, like who invented now? Like where did it appear from? <laughs> so Tony Hoar, basically he, as he claimed, he invented now, like a long time ago, and uh, he basically later on in 2009 called it a million dollar mistake. Because he said, like, well, after that inventing, there are so many null point exceptions, so many time wasted on fixing all of them, so it's probably cost like industry a million of dollars. But nevertheless, whether it was him or not him, but since that language, like I'll go W, a lot of languages basically have that now. I mean, they still use it, and Java is one of those languages, yes. What's interesting, uh, like the question, if, if it's a billion dollar mistake, if there are so many problems, like can we avoid and not using those nouns? Well, the thing is, not in Java, at least for now, because it is there and it will be there forever because it's back, it should be backward comfortable. Also, I can say that sometimes it's probably like easy to use nouns. I mean, why not? I mean, it's just easy to declare something is missing or something is something like, like that. What's interesting is that other languages that evolved sometimes after Java, stuff like that, they have completely different approach. And uh, some, some of those languages like don't have now probably by design. They kind of have a different approach inside the language, inside the compiler, how to handle it. But that's not the case with Java. However, with Java, we can help ourselves to continue using nulls, whatever, how, how we use it, but be more safe about it and like eliminate the, the problem. How do we use nulls currently? Basically, by default in Java, any reference that you define will be null, unless you set it a value. So that's by default. What's interesting, we also use it uh, to indicate some missing values, as in map.get, for example. It returns null, which is a missing value for map, but it might return null because there is a value, but it, the value is null itself. We also sometimes use it as default value, as a known value, as whatever other reasons. And not all those reasons are probably a good thing to use null for. Sometimes there are some other ways how you can indicate like a missing value. But that's how it is. This is map get, for example, it returns null. This is in language. We use it. We, we have to deal with it sometimes. Now is a good question. We use nulls a lot, but do we always check for null? Well, no, we don't. This is a part of all our code, like in two or three projects that use that uh, dev host subscribers. We just get the event, we just envelope, the reference envelope, get the data, we don't check for now. Why? Because we just know that it's not now. How do we know it? Probably by design. And what's interesting, if you take a look at all our codes, you can see that uh, in many places we, we, we could check for now, but we don't, because we know it's not now. Maybe because we ourselves have wrote another code that returns a value, we, we just we said return new something, so it's not null. We know it, we're not going to check it. What's interesting uh, is that we are actually not alone. Uh, there was a study in 2007 that analyzed uh, several open source projects in GitHub, and basically they, they see that about two thirds of all the declarations of reference, they are not null by default. So people just think, I mean, they, that's how they design it. They are not null, that's how they use it, the, the reference, and everything's fine. So uh, we can say that we basically have this, this kind of a contract that is kind of imposed by ourselves also. We uh, mostly develop our applications in such a way that references are not null, but we still use a null for some other reasons. Yeah? The thing is that even if we know that the reference is not null, we might forget about it, we might think that, okay, I will write this method, I will return like something, I know that it's not null, but what's going to do, for, what's the other developer going to do when it uses our code? Maybe he will think that, hmm, should I check for null, should I not? I can take a look at the code maybe, but if it's a large code base, it could be a problem. Are we safe here? Well, actually not. The null point exceptions, they happen. Sometimes we breach the contracts, kind of. I agree, I write code without thinking that everything is not now. You write code, everything is not now, but somebody just put something into map, for example, forgot to check, and null pointer exception. So it happens. I mean, uh, what can we do? 
Uh, check for null everywhere. Well, that's a boilerplate. I mean, it's not gonna work. We're not gonna write everywhere check for null, check for null. For null. This is just nothing, not gonna work. Avoid using null completely. Well, in Java, it's almost impossible. I mean, we, you can do. Like, you can use optionals everywhere, for example. But it's a uh, hell. I mean, it's going to be boilerplate again. It's not going to work. Sometimes nulls are actually useful to use. Um, rely on compiler to detect the errors. Well, for now, compiler in Java can detect only some simple stuff. Like, you assign the null, then you do reference, compiler says, well, that's, that's, that's something bad. Mm, some complex things compiler unfortunately cannot do, and Java, as I said before, designed in such a way it allows now. Maybe in Java 10, they are thinking right now to kind of get the ideas from such languages as Kotlin and I think some others that like uh, put the types which are like not now by default or something. Like but it might happen in Java 10. We're still not in Java 9, so we never know. Uh, what is interesting is that the code analysis, the static code analysis, it actually can help us if it's used correctly. Because we are using it right now, but we still experience the null-point exceptions. What if we kind of help it to be better? Well, we all know the find box. We kind of use it. It can help us detect null pointers. Unfortunately, by default, it can detect only some simple solutions, like simple scenarios. Again, a little bit more complex than a compiler, but still not, not valid because it's really hard to detect if one class returns null in one method and another method and another method, some other calls it. It's sometimes really hard to identify these roots. Unless we help it. Unless we help it, but how can we help it? With annotations. But before we think, like, what kind of annotations, how can we help it, let's see uh, what uh, the states could the reference and object reference have. Well, Basically, three states. It can be null, it can never be null, or it's a known state. Basically, by default, the find box, if we don't mark anything with annotations, it will think that it's a known state. It doesn't know whether it could be null or should not be never be null. I mean, it doesn't know that, unless there are some obvious things. So, uh, we need to add some annotations, and it will help us. Like, uh, what kind of annotations? Unfortunately, in Java world, there are, like, tons of millions of different annotations, like from Firebox, JetBrain, Eclipse, Lombok. I think there was another library. All of them provide some like non-null annotations. Like, what could you use? Interesting enough that Findbox actually supports the majority of those annotations. You can use any; it means Findbox will still work. But Findbox itself previously provided some annotations, but then then they deprecated it, and uh, the creators they basically suggested the GSR 305 kind of the standard annotations to include in Java. Well, they're not going to be included in Java 9, maybe in Java 10, but Java 9 is still like ongoing discussion, so maybe they will appear there. So what do they, what do they suggest? They suggest if reference can be null, you put an annotation nullable. If it cannot be null, you put a non null. Well, if it's a known state, you don't put any annotation. Now the thing, like, okay, we can, we can use these annotations to kind of mark everything in our code. If the reference uh, can be null, we can mark it as nullable, and this probably not a lot of references. But non-null is like everything. And we cannot mark all the code with the same annotation. It's going to be like boilerplate and just going to be something very bad. So uh, what's interesting what we can do, because since we already kind of defined for ourselves a contract, let's be non-null by default, so let's mark only the, uh, the references that can be null, yeah? So this way we can use only one single annotation, which is check for null, and mark only those places that can be null. Also, this annotation check for null instructs us, it, it tells the find box not only that the reference can be null, but also it instructs, before using this reference, please check for null. Kind of ch make a check that it's not null before you dereference it. Kind of it makes you do it, otherwise find box will fail. Uh, what's interesting is that we're not going to put any other annotations and there are not going to be a known nullity because by default everything's going to be non null. The last question is like how do we impose this default state? Because we need to kind of put some trigger like, okay, this is the default one. Again, that can be done with additional annotation. The JSF305 provides annotations called type qualifier default. default. It means that anything you put uh, on top of this type qualifier default will kind of spread to all the types defined over here. So what does it mean? It means that we create our own annotation. It's called non-null by default. We said that it's non-null, yes? And we put the type qualifier default like every possible type. So it means like every possible place where we have a type definition, which is a method argument, method return, uh, fields of a class, uh, I don't know, the class itself, like a static places and stuff like that, local variables, by default, they are non-null. 
So the uh, find box knows it's not now. Okay, and you you don't put any more annotations. Where to put our own annotation? Well, you have to put it inside the packaging for file. You put it on the package level, and everything that inside this package, all the classes, all the methods, all the fields, all the local variables, everything is now null, and everybody's happy. Here is basically only one problem: is that in Java, unfortunately, everything uh, you put inside the packaging for it's not propagated to a child packages. So basically, in all the child packages, you have to create this packaging for file with this annotation. This is the only thing that might sound like a bit of uh, over over steps. So like you, I mean, you kind of making something that is maybe not good. However, that is pretty easily automatable. I mean, can be automated. Kind of just scan the project and all, all the packages just put this packaging for file, and you're done. So you are not null for all the classes, all the methods, all the fields uh, by default. And the, the fields where you want to be now, you kind of put the annotation check for now. Do you know if IntelliJ is going to support that annotation? Yeah, it is supporting that annotation. So Absolutely. basically it's a very cool thing, even in IntelliJ, you just basically activate it and it will show you right away without running find Uh One more thing I forgot to tell is that um, if you don't put this non-null by default annotation in package info, then find bugs will think that uh, like it's unknown nullity because you didn't say what say what's default. Uh, that's why I also th suggest to have a check style rule that kind of checks that a package should have these annotations. The benefits we have here, like what, how can it benefit us? Basically, we um, since we already have this contract, th since we this, that's the way basically majority developers develop thinking that the variables are not null. We kind of enforce this contract with fine bugs. So find box will help us if somebody breaches the contract, it will say, hey, you assign null to a non-null variable, that's not good. Put a check for null if you really want it. You put a check for null, now go there where you use it variable and check for null before you use it because it might be null, that's a normal thing. Uh, so basically it will help us detect the null pointers actually earlier because if we kind of use it incorrectly. But what, what's more also interesting, it will help us improve our coding style because people will think twice before returning null from a method. Sometimes you might not need to return a null. Maybe you want to return optional. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's possible. Maybe you can kind of like uh, re-architect your, your project and not use the nulls if you, if you don't need them. Where you need them, you're going to use it and you're fine. But where you don't need them, you're not going to use it. And basically that could lead to a better code quality. That's what I think. And less bugs. And at the end, let me show you a couple of examples of one of our projects, which is quality gate. <laughs> which is a quality project written in Java, that's why I kind of decided to do it. So what I did is basically I've created these non-null annotations that I showed before. I've set it to all uh, the package info files in the quality gate, and then just ran the find box and see what I get. So we have this uh, class in quality gates called request. Yeah, it has two constructors, and one of the constructor in request, it basically sets a null to uh, Travis build ID, which is an integer. It's a normal constructor, yeah? Some, there are places where this constructor is called. If you run the find box with that non-null annotation, it will show you, hey, this, you are passing null to a non-null argument, because by default, everything is not null. So, what can we do? Well, we just need to add this check for null annotations. We add this annotation, so find box will be fine, okay, it knows that it's null, null is acceptable here. But if you run the find box again, now it will show you all the places where you use that uh, Travis Builder D, which is a public final field, without checking for null, which is actually a place. In the reports API consumer, in the accept method that consumes the reports API, yeah, we have this get local reports method. We put the request get travel build where we call the re local reports method. You might see here that basically that's what the error shows. Unboxing the reference might produce no point exception. So that's like one of the possible bugs that we actually have right now in quality gate. Uh, one more example, check, check result class, it has a check type, it has a method, uh, static method fail to create a check result, it calls a constructor which sets an null to check type. Well, it's a normal thing, we, we don't have like a check type for this fail, okay, it's failed. So it's again, the, it shows you things, if you put the check for null annotation over there, the find box will report the same method in the same class that actually dereferences this check type without checking for null. So if you call the code get context after you created a fail, you will get null pointer exception. And this method get context is actually being called in, again in reports API consumer. So it's not very obvious to see 
because it's actually now and it probably passed the code review and all that. It's not very obvious to see, but if we add these things, it will be possible to catch some things. Uh, the good question you might ask, like, why don't we get those null pointers actually right now? It works. Well, yes, if you analyze, I, I've tried, like, spent a couple of hours trying to analyze, like, how those methods are called, like, why don't we get those exceptions? Well, yes. There are, the code flows is such that we don't, uh, don't call these methods. For example, we don't call the check type to string if the check type is null, it's not never created and stuff like that. But it's really, I mean, you need to spend time to kind of understand it and analyze it. And if, like, I know, a new developer comes, refactors the code, or adds some new functionality code, it might not know that this check type actually could be null, and you should check for it before using it. So, to conclude that, if we accept uh, this non-null behavior and non-null annotation, uh, and not ba basically code co coding contract, but not only accepting by, by just simply agreeing, but basically impose it or enforce it by using those annotations and using the fine box, we might have a better code quality on our Java projects. Thank you very much. And questions, answers, and questions. <laughs>